Chapter 21 of The Bat. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Alan Winteroud. The Bat by Mary Roberts Reinhardt. Chapter 21. Quite a Collection. An hour or so later, in a living room whose terrors had departed, Miss Cornelia, her niece, and Jack Bailey were gathered before a roaring fire. The local police had come and gone. The bodies of Courtley Fleming and his nephew had been removed to the mortuary. Beresford had returned to his home, though under summons as a material witness. The bat, under heavy guard, had gone off under charge of the detective. As for Dr. Wells, he too was under arrest, and a broken man, though, considering the fact that Courtley Fleming had been throughout the prime mover in the conspiracy, he might escape with a comparatively light sentence. In a little while, the newspaper men of all the great journals would be at the door. But for a moment, the sorely tried group at Cedarcrest enjoyed a temporary respite, and they made the best of it while they could. The fire burned brightly, and the lovers, hand in hand, sat before it. But Miss Cornelia, bird-like and brisk, sat upright on a chair nearby, and relived the greatest triumph of her life while she knitted with automatic precision. "'Knit two, pearl two, she would say, and then would wander once more back to the subject in hand. Out behind the flower garden, the ruins of the garage and her beloved car were still smoldering. A cool night wind came through the broken window pane, where not so long before the bloody hand of the injured detective had intruded itself. On the door to the hall, still fastened as the bat had left it, was the pathetic little creature with which the bat had signed a job, for once before he had completed it. But calmly and dispassionately, Miss Cornelia worked out the crossword puzzle of the evening and announced her results. It is all clear, she said. Of course the doctor had the blueprint, and the bat tried to get it from him. That's when the doctor had stunned him and locked him in the billiard room. The bat still had the key and unlocked his own handcuffs. After that, he had only to get out of a window and shut us in here. And again. He had probably trailed the real detective all the way from town, and attacked him where Mr. Beresford found the watch. Once, too, she hearkened back to the anonymous letters. "'It must have been a blow to the doctor and Courtley Fleming, when they found me settled in the house,' she smiled grimly, and when their letters failed to dislodge me. But it was the bat who held her interest. His daring assumption of the detective's identity, his searching of the house, ostensibly for their safety, but in reality for the treasure, and that one moment of irresolution when he did not shoot the doctor at the top of the ladder, and thereafter lost his chance. It somehow weakened her terrified admiration for him, but she had nothing but a claim for the escape he had made from the hidden room itself. That took brains, she said, cold, hard brains, to dash out of that room and down the stairs, pull off his mask and pick up a candle, and then to come calmly back to the trunk room again and accuse the doctor. That took real ability. But I dread to think what would have happened when he asked us all to go out and leave him alone with the real Anderson. It was after two o'clock, when she finally sent the young people off to some needed sleep, but she herself was still bright-eyed and wide awake. When Lizzie came at last to coax and scold her into bed, she was sitting happily at the table, surrounded by diverse small articles which she was handling with an almost childlike zest. A clipping about the bat from the evening newspaper. A small piece of paper on which was a well-defined fingerprint. A revolver and a heap of five shells. A small, very dead bat. The anonymous warnings, including the stone in which the last one had been wrapped. A battered and broken watch, somehow left behind. A dried and broken dinner roll, and the box of sedative powders brought by Dr. Wells. Lizzie came over to the table and surveyed her grimly. You see, Lizzie, it's quite a collection. I'm going to take them and... But Lizzie bent over the table and picked up the box of powders. No, ma'am, she said with extreme finality. You are not. You are going to take these and go to bed. And Miss Cornelia did. End of chapter 21 Recording by Alan Winteroud Boom Coach dot blogspot dot com end of the bat by mary roberts reinhardt